Something is breaking through the interplanetary magnetic field of Earth. Um, we can look at the NASA product over here. It's, um, I forget which one it is, but it happened today. Great big old waves of something came through. And then if you look at this magnetosphere happened today, you see the arrows are pointing at a large band of orange um, coming through. Um, just before all of these on the red on the NASA product shows up. They're both NASA products, but something's happening to the magnetic field of Earth. And we saw yesterday, I think it was maybe, how that there are portals that open up in the magnetic field throughout the day. And they have these like satellites that go around and um, they find these openings and um, they send the signal to the other satellites and they like go through their portals. And um, I think we talked about how one of the portals, the, the crack in the magnetosphere was open for was it, around 14 hours. And auroras were seen around the United States and Canada. And this happened, I think, on July the 7th. Well, that's after CERN started up. Um, and I want to talk about the magnetic field. And I want to talk about CERN and Earth and the plasma apocalypse. And um, all these other events, lightning strikes and all of it. All of it. Because something really strange is going on, you all. So if you're just tuning in, welcome. And um, we're going to get to it, you all. Let me come over here because this is, this don't feel right. It really doesn't feel right in my spirit. And it probably doesn't feel right in your spirit. Um, it doesn't. Um, so that's all right. It'll be fine, you all. It will be fine. Hello, Apple Brooks, honey. Yeah, so we're going to watch it. We're gonna, I'm going to take you first um, over to the, um, which one did I open up first, you all? Um, let me just, um, I want to close one of these. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put all my bookmarks in at the same time when I'm done with this video so you all can see is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here. Let me close this out because this is, we're going to go somewhere. So we're looking at this. Right here, you all. This is um, the iswa.gsfc.nasa.gov. We're on their page again, you all. Imagine that. Because they got lots of little products that are available to the public. Isn't that quite lovely? I think it's lovely. I really do. To look at them, you all. I want you to look at the magnetosphere. And I'm going to put it to me because it's going to start blinking. Um... Well, it doesn't blink that much, you all. You can look at it. Look at this. Look how this great big old orange band comes through. And I can I can slow it down, you all. I can slow it down. Watch it. It ain't came through yet. It's getting ready to come through. You'll see it right up there at the top. See it right there, that great big old orange strip? Let me get myself off of here. Okay, I've got myself off of here. Look at the great big orange band how it comes through and watch what happens to this area as it comes through. Look at these collapse. They bend down at the force of whatever it is coming through and you can see it right here too. It goes straight down. Boom! These like disconnect. Look at this. Let's watch this again. Let's watch it now. Boom. Boom. Just forces it all the way down, you all. And it's around the same time span. And then these show up on the NASA product right here. And I'm going to have to put this to me because it's going to start. Don't be playing with me. Um, I told that product, stop playing with me, you all, because it, it is kind of playing with me. I wanted to um, show the stuff on there. I didn't expect to see that type of stuff flying across that screen that we did. Let me um, let me put it to here so you can see it. It's going back on the 23rd. Uh, we can watch it. 
because it don't happen. This is like three days. I could have it going on a short span like this, but you'll see them show up at around um, 1800. Boom! That ha happened that fast, you all. That fast. So they show up like that. Look at that. Soho Laskell C2. It's like 1800. 17 all as well and boom what on earth is happening because you not only have these coming this way you have the, the beams of light coming out from behind the sun something is breaking through um, the interplanetary magnetic field um, and you can see it up here too and let's talk about that magnetic field you all let's talk about the magnetic field because I think it's something worth talking about. I most definitely do. So let's look at this, you all. We're going to come over here to the home of CERN. The home of CERN. And I'm going to copy this down while I'm over here. And we're going to talk about CERN. Uh, CERN's magnetic field. Okay, we are. The demonstrator magnet produces a record magnet field. The ERMC demonstrator consisting of two flat niobium tin coils has produced a peak magnetic field of 16.5 Tesla. A promising result in the context of the FCC, the Future Circular Collider Study. You can see this is on March the 20th. 16.5 Tesla. And here's one of the magnets right here. You can see it. I think they have like two magnets. Um, let's look at this. One of the keys to pushing the energy limits of the accelerators is being able to reach magnetic higher magnetic fields. CERN on several other CERN and several other laboratories around the world have launched the R&D programs aimed at improving magnet technology. And in February, a demonstrator magnet using superconducting niobium tin cooled to 1.9 kelvins and achieved a peak magnetic field of 16.5 tesla on the conductor exceeding the previous record of 16.2 tesla in 2015 you all so um, we can see it right here the coils are used composed of multi-filament composite wire made of niobium tin superconductor reach higher magnetic fields titanium superconductor um, the dipole magnets in the LHC operated a nominal field of 8.3 Tesla. And um, there's two of them. Okay, there's two of them, you all. So I've got this on there. Guess how much Earth's magnetic field is, you all. Let's, let's guess how much the magnetic field is of Earth. Let me, let me just move this. Let me shrink this down a tad bit. We're going to see the two comparison magnetic fields of Earth. Tesla and Earth. Let's look at this. LHC of CERN, the Large Hadron Collider, has a magnetic field of 16.5 Tesla. Earth's magnetic field varies between 30 to 65 millionths of a Tesla. It's not even one Tesla. The magnetic field of Earth is not one Tesla, yet you have CERN who's running at a 16.5 Tesla. That is bound to interfere with Earth's magnetic field. That is bound to puncture holes and make cracks in the magnetic field. Um, I didn't know that. You think the magnetic field is strong, but it's not. CERN, look how... S we don't even have one Tesla strength in the magnetic field but CERN 16.5 that's powerful you all that's really really powerful so with that technology and that energy could you imagine what it's capable of doing um, could you imagine that and to back it up we're going to go to the documentation we're going to go to it you all we're going to look at it yes we are we're going to look at that so we've already looked at the CERN, and I think I've already, let me see, I want to make sure I already put it in here. Yes, I did. I'm going to click it out. We're going to look at this article right here, explaining science. We can come over here because it's scientific, you all. This is from April the 24th, 
of 2016. How cool is that, you all? That's exactly six years ago. No, no, it's, I thought that said August. Excuse me. <laughs> I was getting excited, you all. I was getting really excited. I really was. I'm going to think it's, it's August the 24th. That's exactly around six years ago, but it wasn't. <laughs> you got to be able to laugh, you all. You really do. So we're going to go over to this science things right here. Explaining science. Earth's magnetic field. Earth is unique among the inner planets in our solar system. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. In that, it has a strong magnetic field. It is this invisible field which causes the needle of a compass to point north and has been used by navigators for centuries and is used by migrating birds and some animals to find their way. Isn't that pretty? It's so cute. It's a nice graphics. Another important function of the Earth's magnetic field is that it protects us from the harmful radiation from space. And in this pulse, I'll talk about what causes the Earth's magnetic field and the protection it gives us, which we would have to artificially provide if humanity were ever to build colonies on other planets. Well, I think um, that um, I think they can provide um, a magnetic field. Um, the Earth's magnetic field behaves as though there were a giant bar magnet inside the earth it looks like it too you all inside the earth let me put this on here inside the earth and the poles of this invisible magnet marked as nm and sm in the diagram lie close to the real geographical poles marked as n and s now we're, we're reading an article about the magnetic field you all we're going to go to it we're here we're already here the strength of the magnetic field is measured in tesla Named after the Siberian-American physicist, engineer, and inventor Nikola Tesla, 1856 to 1943, a magnetic field of one Tesla is a fairly strong magnetic field. For instance, a small bar magnet has a field strength of 0 0.01 Tesla. The Earth's magnetic field is much weaker than this. It varies between 30 to 65 millionths of a Tesla, alternately described as a 3065 micro tesla and is stronger near the magnetic poles and weaker near the equator nicholas tesla oh i didn't know he was on the side siberian um, 100 dinar what causes the earth's magnetic field uh, accepted theory is known as the dynamo theory it details the theory uh, rather complex in summary, it states that the Earth's magnetic field is generated by movements steered up by the Earth's rotation, known as convection currents in the outer core, which is liquid, and because it's made out of iron, it's a good conductor of electricity. By this theory, for any planet to have a magnetic field, part of its interior must consist of a liquid which conducts electricity, and it must be rotating rapidly to generate the convection currents. But you know that's not true. CERN has a 16.5 Tesla magnetic field. Okay, well, it is inside the Earth, but it's not inside the core of the Earth, you all. Let's get back to this, you all. So we've got that picture of the Earth. What about the other planets? Well, they don't say much about them. Um, they, Mercury has no magnetic field. Um, Mars has no magnetic field. Um, Venus, Mercury rotate slowly once every 59 days, which meant um, if their outer core were still liquid, its rotation would be too slow to create any magnetic field. Um, so they don't have a magnetic field, you all. They don't have a magnetic field. Imagine that. That's okay. It is. Um, so we're looking at uh, the effect of the lack of a magnetic field on Venus. It means their Earth ain't going to get destroyed. <laughs> Their, their planet won't get destroyed, you all. The Earth's magnetic field forms a protective shield called the magnetosphere, protecting it from a stream of electric, electrically charged particles from the sun called the solar wind, and this is shown in the diagram. Okay, you can see this Venus and all this kind of stuff. The stratosphere, ozone, you can see these right here. Um, finally, they hope you have this. They like, like that. There you go. 
So uh, there are many magnetic anomalies where the Earth's magnetic field is much stronger or much weaker than it would be. Okay, we've seen that, you all. We have seen that. So I want to make sure I marked that one down. Let me see. Magnetic field explains science. Okay, I did it. Okay, so we're, we're there. We're right here. We're looking at CERN. <laughs> CERN's magnetic field of 16.5 Tesla, you all. Come on now. And you know it's got to have electricity. It has to have a lot of electricity. And it's got great big magnets. It didn't say nothing about no iron ore. It didn't, you all. Oh, my gosh. Mm, you all, hit that like button and subscribe. Now we're going to go over. We're going to talk, <laughs> talk about that theory. The plasma apocalypse. The MCO event, okay, and it has, has something to do with the magnetosphere. If the Earth's magnetic field were to no longer be there, that would create the, um, if it had a hole put in it, it'd create the MCO event. Um, yeah, you all. Let's get to it, you all. I'm trying to stay right on track. I promise you I am. This was pretty cool. I want to put this... Um, I want to put this link that I went to, my search. I want to put the search in the thing when I put it inside the description so you can see the whole entire search that was pulled up. I want to do it. The first thing I clicked into, you all, this is pretty cool looking. Look at this. It takes us over here to this one right here. Let me just let me just put that right there, you all. This is so cool looking, this um, thing. I guess it's a game or something. We're gonna, I'm going to put his thing in here, whoever it is. So the plasma apocalypse, you all. Let me put myself on here because I think I might look good in purple. Okay, I might look good in purple. So that's all right, you all. We got it. The plasma apocalypse. Okay, it's got some little alien jellyfish. And look at those pretty things. They got a dream shop. Uh, ancient oblivion. They got elves and North Pole, mud fossils, plasma volcanoes. and Okay, so the warning. The strange... Sky clouds, revelation trumpets. Look at this is marked out 2019 to 2024. Strange sounds coming from the sky will be heard around the world as the ice dome starts to crack and melt. Then the sun goes out. The world goes dark. The sky is pitch black, instant dark. You all, that's pretty cool, ain't it? It's pretty cool. I haven't seen this before. I haven't. I got to get my socks off. I do. My feet trying to get hot, y'all, because this is getting exciting. It's getting a real exciting. Michelle, honey, if you were on here, your your mama G is uh, taking her socks off because my feet are getting a little hot. I'm, I'm getting it going now. That's okay. Hello there, Rick. Uh, so let's look at this. So we're right back here. Everything floats. I don't know what the rest of this says. The electromagnetic energy shuts down and the world experiences anti-gravity and you float too then the sky opens up number four with the support of the electromagnetic force field now gone pressure causes the dome to break and the sky opens up can you all see that this is really neat you all it is so then Number five, the rapid world depressurization. Pressurized atmosphere escapes, causing many to bleed from the nose and ears. Air instantly turns into fog, mist, and snow. Now, this is a theory I want everybody to know. This is a theory that I'm reading on this um, page right here. There's lots of theories out there. I like to explore all the theories because I think there's a little bit of truth in a lot of the theories. I really do. And it takes all the theories probably to get to the big piece of puzzle that's missing. Mm -hmm. So we got it. Six, everything gets sucked up. Anything that isn't secured to or inside of the solid ground will be pulled into space by the suction effect of depressurization. The world storm spins, strong winds rip away weak objects, and the Arctic Circle instantly freezes from the downdraft. Okay, let's look at this. The Enter the Phantasoids. Oh my gosh. After the pressure is released, fractual creatures 
from the microverse enter into our realm. Well, that would be a CERN doing something like that. Uh, opening up a parallel world, open up portals to other realms. I could see that happen, you all, because you know they want to do it. They want to go in those portals and they want to bring something in. Um, plasma tentacles on the, okay, this is number eight. With the force field down, the plasma spirals down to the ground itself, electrocuting anything in its path, you all. That reminds me of the dark plasma filaments on the sun. It really does. That's what that reminds me of. Um, yes, CERN is still on. So, number nine, everything falls. Everything falls and the world is a dump. Cargo cults arise. Then, the sky is red. The polarity reversal is complete. The flow of light reverses direction, traveling upward, Longer lifespans, weaker gravity, magic abilities, and the spark of life is given to everything. Uh, number two, the zombie apocalypse. From the people to animals, the rise of the undead. So that's one theory you are right there. That was, um, that was pretty wild right there you are. It was the other thing. you wanna, I want to really know what the um, event is tea honey you ain't got time to eat you gotta sit and watch this now unless you can eat and watch at the same time then you can multitask okay and i think you could multitask let's let's get this down you all tommy truthful um apocalypse thing let me make sure i've got this i want to put all of this in here because we're talking about um if you're just tuning in let me let me reiterate the Earth's magnetic field is not even one Tesla, not even one Tesla strength. CERN is 16.5. That's the magnetic field that it creates. 16.5. Okay, so it is the most powerful force on this Earth. Okay, it is. Uh, it could puck through anything. It could probably puncture through space itself. So, you know, with that much force, they could literally pierce a hole straight through what they call this dome in the sky this magnetosphere which is protecting us and stuff like that and boom that plasma apocalypse could come because they want to open up a portal to another realm to other worlds so they can learn from them you all or they want to bring in the dark master they could want to bring in the dark master and i'm not joking the dark entities uh, to take over this earth so let's come over here did I put this down here or did I get too busy talking? Okay, I didn't get too busy talking. I'm going to put myself right here. So the Plasma Apocalypse Umbrella Academy Session 3. I just wanted to see what it was about. The MCO event because um, this kind of gets into it, you all. So the Plasma Apocalypse. Has anyone heard about the Plasma Apocalypse on here is what I want to know. Sunny Taylor. Gina, honey, don't care if the earth is flat, and I don't care if it's round. All I know that we're all stuck on this earth. <laughs> we are, and this earth is like, it's, it's, um, it's changing. We got to find a way to get off this earth. We do. Okay, that's wonderful. Yeah. So the plasma apocalypse, known as the MCO event, or the electromagnetic plasma change over event, is one of the wildest yet interesting conspiracy theories I've come across. Keep in mind that I'm not saying this will happen anytime soon or even at all. Shauna Tucker, yeah. Um, but hey, anything is possible. According to the proponents of this theory, sometime in the future there will be a celestial event that triggers a portal to open up in the sky. Now, I hadn't heard of this until around a year ago. I think it was around a year ago I heard of this. Maybe a year and a half. And I thought, wow, that is really strange. But I could, I could see it happening. I could. That's right. I could see it happening. So, um, supposedly, this is a cyclical, and it has happened before in the ancient past. Some say this event is what destroyed Atlantis. Um, the portal is a plasma vortex above the North Pole that leads to higher realms. 
However, the vortex can only connect with our rim when Earth's magnetic field is down. Supposedly, our planet's protective shield will temporarily dissipate after we experience a pole shift. Scientists say that the pole shift happens all the time uh, and they can weaken our electromagnetic field by up to 60%. Well, that electromagnetic field is getting weaker by the moment because CERN is running 24-7 is um, what it's running. And this link right here, as you can see, you all, um, it's, got, it's got links to the articles where all this information came from. So this is a good link right here. You all could go into it. According to NASA, pole shifts occur about every 200 to 300,000 years. However, it's been more than twice that long since the last one took place. Now, how can they know that? It's been more than twice that since something took place. We are overdue for such an event, and some archaeologists claim that a pole shift once destroyed a global civilization. So when will it happen? No one knows. However, there is a magnetic anomaly in the South Atlantic that's growing bigger and bigger and some say this is a sign that another pole shift is imminent you all let's look at this um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I wonder if this will have um, this pole shift on here okay at Earth's magnetic field well this is not showing the anomaly but we, let's look at this magnetic ano anomaly Magnetic anomaly, what they're talking about. Um, where is it at? Well, it shows up in green on some of these, you all. But it literally, um, as it goes across, it just like keeps going across the earth. Like, just say like this right here. It just keeps going across like that. Just keeps showing up and stuff like that. That's what it does. Let me get off of this one. So I'm not supposed to be focusing on that at all. I'm not. So anyhow, we got a magnetic anomaly uh, in the South Atlantic that's growing bigger and bigger. So this article right here, when was this article written? 2022, June the 25th of 2022. That's great. So it's a pretty up-to-date article. Um, it is. I hope this is all right, you all, because this is important. Since CERN's, again, this is, Earth does not even have um, one Tesla strength in its magnetic field. CERN has 16.5 Tesla magnetic field. So um, it can open portals in the sky. Um, it can. Let me put this back to the screen. Um, let's get back to this one. So um, while a post shift is realistic, the ideal of a portal opening up in the sky sounds very far-fetched. However, a similar concept is referred in both the Quran and the Bible. They say during the apocalypse, the heavens will recede like a scroll being rolled up. This theme is also present in many television shows. For example, in Gravity Falls, there is an apocalyptic event known as the Weird Mageddon that begins after an interdimensional rift opens up in the sky and um, let me get my fa my face off of here and other worldly creatures pour out and the laws of physics begin to unravel unravel now we know that gravity falls is a real place where you know it's the gravity is really weird and it does exist you all so an apocalyptic event called weird mageddon that begins after an interdimensional rift opens up in the sky. Now, I know there's a lot of people who believe in interdimensional um, beings and interdimensional other realms. So it's not so far fetched to even think that a big rift would open up in the sky. And if you read the Bible or you read the Quran or you watch that Gravity Falls, you know that it speaks of the heavens receding like a scroll and being rolled up. So another uh, term for that would be an interdimensional rift in the sky if you were to watch the Gravity Falls and probably the Simpsons or somebody says something like that too, you all. Let me put this back to this. Um, so MCO believers claim that the absence 
of the electromagnetic field will temporarily cause zero gravity. Again, this sounds far-fetched, but now some physicists think gravity might be an aspect of electromagnetism. So far, no theory can fully explain how gravity works. And the name Gravity Falls seems to imply zero gravity. The protagonist's name, Dipper, also seems to hint at the location of the portal. He's nicknamed after his birthmark that resembles the Big Dipper. The constellation points to Polaris, which hangs right above the North Pole. Wow, that is really interesting, you all. It hangs right above the North Pole. Let's find the North Pole. Let's go to Google Earth and let's find the North Pole, you all. Let's go to the North Pole to Google Earth. Pause. Let's so pause you right now. Let's type in the North Pole. Let's see what. Let's look at it for those who may not know where the North Pole is. No, the North Pole. Can we go to the North Pole? Is it going to say Norway? Uh, I just want the North Pole, you all. There we go. We're going to the North Pole. So there is a portal over the North Pole, Polaris. Let's zoom up on this, y'all. This looks really wild if you look at the center of this. Let me do this. It does. It looks wild. And sometimes in the very center of this, at cer certain times, this area right here, it looks strange. It does. So that's really interesting. Um, the constellation of... Um, Polaris right here the constellation of, of Polaris constellation of Polaris um, You can see them right here Look at that Polaris star constellation that looks really pretty doesn't it? Oh uh, look it's right here by the Big Dipper Let me put this in here you all because this would be a good link to go to also in this um, thing. Isn't that pretty? So Ursa Major. Um, wait, did somebody say that somebody's supposed to be looking toward the northeast for something coming? Um, yeah, to the northeast. So that's neat. Okay, Ursa Minor right there. Ursa Minor. Okay, so we got it. Look, we got it. So let me put this back to me. So we went over here to look at the constellations, and now we're going to come back to him, you all, if that's okay, because we're going to do it. We're, we're talking about the Earth's magnetic field and how CERN has a 16.5 Tesla strength in its magnetic field, and the Earth does not even have one, not even a one Tesla. Okay, it doesn't. So, of course, CERN is very, very powerful. It is. I'm not just saying it. You know it. Okay, so let's get back to this. So the protagonist's name is Dipper. It always. It also seems to hint at the location of the portal, which is supposed to be open. Um, he's nicknamed after his birthmark, which resembles the Big Dipper. The constellation points to Polaris, which hangs right above the North Pole. Dipper's birthmark. The show contains a lot of occult symbolism. Far too much to present all in this thread. There are many all-seeing eyes and messianic symbols hidden in the scenery, but you can see one of the main characters dressed up to resemble a Shriner, a member of a messianic order. Gronkel Stan next to a Shriner. According to the Imco theorists, um, during zero gravity, Things that are not secured to the ground will begin to float and get sucked into the portal. They say that this is the real rapture, an end-time event preached by some Christians where believers are taken up into heaven. The Futurama movie also predicts the plasma apocalypse. And once again, there is a rip in the sky as an interdimensional gateway. And the, after the main characters go on an expedition to investigate it, they learn the laws of electromagnetism change when you get near it. 
Um, how we doing in here, you all? This is interesting. The protagonist, Fry, ends up being sent into the rip and discovers the beast with a billion backs, a colossal one-eyed tentacle creature made of a substance known as electro matter. The beast awakens and begins invading Earth by forcing its appendages through the portal. Supposedly, during the MCO, plasma streams will come out of the vortex and spiral down the Earth looking for places to ground themselves. Some of these streams will find human hosts. Similarly, the beast, which resembles a giant plasma ball, attempts to attach itself to everyone. T, honey, you're going to have to get over it. If you need to go get your blankie, go get your blankie to provide you that comfort and security that you need. Okay, T, it's going to be okay. Now, this is the beast compared to a plasma ball. Wow, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool, you all. Let me get this off of here. So, they say plasma streams will attach themselves to non-living hosts, reanimating the dead, and bringing machines and other inanimate objects to life. A scene in Ghostbusters seem to depict when a portal opens and spirits possess corpses and even a giant corporate mascot. Now, you all, this, this might be too much for you all. You got to wait because this might be a tad bit long of a video, but this really is the only other place I'm going through to, but I want to hear this myself. Um, that's right, you all. But anyway, after encountering the beast, Fry returns to Earth with a tentacle attached to his neck. You all, I'm going to have to, I got to watch the one stream right here. Uh... I've got to watch my stream because I don't know where I'm at on here. Okay, I'm good. I'm good, you all. I'm good. He got a tentacle attached to his neck. He tells everyone to love the tentacles and becomes the Pope of a religion that worships them. The theme of the tentacles controlling people's minds is in many other movies. Supposedly... These plasma streams will erase their host's memory. Once again, far-fetched, but it is speculated that electric plasma could interact with our electric brains, and researchers have found electricity can be used to wipe someone's mind. Mm. Is plasma an alien life form? I think plasma is a life form, whether it be human or not. I guess one could consider it an alien life form um, since they really never have encountered one in person. Um, the term was borrowed from blood plasma because it describes the substance life-like behavior. According to physicists, 99.9% .9 of the universe is made up of plasma. If the plasma is sentient, could it be considered an omnipotent entity? Is this universal plasma God? After Fry succeeds in converting everyone, the beast reveals that it wants to marry humanity and bring them into its dimension which resembles heaven. This seems to be a reference to the rapture event mentioned earlier in the biblical idea that believers are the bride of Christ. Earlier in the movie, the military attempts to launch a missile into the gateway. MCO theorists say the elite will do something similar. They'll launch rockets into the vortex in attempt to escape. Supposedly, the opening of the portal gives humanity a chance to ascend. 
to buy some time, the elite will use Project Bluebeam to fake an alien invasion. They'll do this to explain away the arrival of the interdimensional creatures and people being raptured. When the elite make their gateway or the getaway, the masses will assume that they're just fighting off ET invaders. I haven't heard this part yet, you all. I haven't. So this is strange. I'm actually getting hungry, but that's okay. I need to have a drink of water. Just a little dab will do me. They also say that the elite will try to prevent people from ascending with them by creating an artificial electromagnetic field that holds back the plasma while Earth's natural one is down. In the Futurama movie, the governments of the world symbolically do the same. Perhaps this is the real reason corporations want to spray smart dust in our atmosphere. In the movie, they also discover robots cannot pass through the portal. Only organic matter can. Maybe this is true, and that's why there's a sudden push to merge humans with machines. Um, with uh, machines, you all. And this may not be for everyone, you all. This is a theory um, that's out there, and I just heard of it around a, a year or year and a half ago, and I think... Um, I like to listen to all the different theories that are out there. I may not agree with them. I, I think there's some truth in every theory, and it's it's part of the bigger picture, you all. So this is pretty neat. It's kind of like a movie. It does, you all. And you got little clicks, little links that you can click into. Looks like a big tree root system. The shield falls. Okay, so this is like a... So the elite wants to... Um, do something they want to hold back the plasma with earth's while natural one natural one is down so they created their own electromagnetic field which cern has got an electromagnetic field um i guess that could literally hold back the plasma it could you all uh, if it wanted to so the shield fails and as started stated earlier the beast succeeds in invading earth here it is interesting to note that when the central tentacle shoots down in the center of the city, it is reminiscent of the mythological world tree that connects our realm to the realm of the gods. The central tentacle compared with the world tree. Little um, um, visual. That's pretty neat with the world tree. Um, some say that the elite are trying to trigger this event. Scientists say, uh, scientists at CERN openly admit they're looking for other dimensions and the creator of the D-Wave has stated quantum computers will summon Lovecraft's great old ones. Tentacle beings seem to symbolize the plasma apocalypse. In the mist, the military opens an interdimensional doorway and Lovecraftian monsters come through. This movie seems to hint at the mist that will appear when MCO be begins. The mist will be called by the depressurization of our atmosphere that happens once Earth's EMF goes down. Um, have you all seen the movie, The Mist, or these Lovecraftian things? I guess Lovecraft is a game. I haven't seen either one, uh, so I don't know what they're talking about. And there's no way I would watch The Mist. I wouldn't watch it because it sounds pretty scary. Um, Kelly Pakovov, um, you've got a theory. Um... So let's look at the rest of this, you all, because this is pretty cool. Um, there are many things that people claim will happen, supposedly just like the black hole. The vortex will suck in all the heat energy in its vicinity, creating a whirlwind of supercooled air. 
This whirlwind will evolve into a massive storm that flash freezes everything in its past. Some say the world's water will get sucked into the vortex. Some say it will pass through the storm and turn into a giant hailstone. The water that's not frozen will become radioactive from the radiation given off by the vortex and turn into blood red rain. Uh, that's Stephen Hawking's radiation. At the, plies, at, the plasma, at the climax of the plasma apocalypse, even larger plasma beams will begin striking the earth like lightning. You always see a lot of lightning on those lightning maps, remember? Carving out new canyons, pulverizing the mountains. In some places, plasma beams will liquefy the ground causing mud floods that buy, bury entire cities. This part of the event reads almost exactly like Revelation 16. Um, then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since mankind has been on earth. So tremendous was the quake. The great city split into three parts, and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the Great and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury from his wrath. Every island fled away, and mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones, each weighing about a hundred pounds, fell on people. And they cursed God on account of the plague of hell because the plague was so terrible. Um, so, once the pole shift is complete, the electromagnetic field will stabilize and the portal will close. Few will ascend and many will die, but some will survive. The majority of survivors will have had their memories wiped. But still, there will be a few who remember. The people who remember will record what happened by carving symbols into stone, just like our ancient ancestors once did. Some of them will form secret groups and use knowledge for gain. Others will spread it freely and create religions. They will become the new leaders. Did you all see the book of Eli? Uh, they say it tells a similar story. I saw that movie, but I don't want to watch it again. I really don't. It's kind of, it's kind of, um, it's kind of apocalyptic, you all. It really is. It was a pretty good movie, but I don't want to watch it again. I don't. Um, old junk that was flung into the sky will fall back to the ground, giving the survivors a hint of their past and materials to rebuild civilization with. The machines that came to life during the event will be around and humans and robots will learn to work together. Together they will kill off the majority of the creatures who entered through the vortex, which eventually, eventually becomes the new monsters of myth and legend. The movie Wall-E paints a similar picture of a future. Keep in mind that humans are now living in space. I did not like that movie Wall-E. I didn't, you all. That was so, um, that was, that was too, um, eerie, that movie. I didn't like it at all. It was like lonely. It was, it gave me a very lonely, lonely, lonely feeling. Um, the planet now teeming with electrical energy will be an environment that promotes new life. Humans, plants, and animals will grow larger and have extended lifespans. Children will be born with many different supernatural abilities. However, after a couple thousand of years, the energy will get used up and things go back to normal. Then the cycle will repeat. The plasma apocalypse is both destructive and creative force. It's the simulation's reset button. But like I said, this theory sounds ridiculous. Nevertheless, it does seem as if the memory of such an event is hidden somewhere deep in the collective consciousness. Perhaps this memory is trying to make itself known through our art and our 
and each artistic creation is just one piece of the story. Perhaps now is the time for us to help one another put these pieces together. Thanks for reading, you all. So, um, yeah, so you can see that. That's where it went. I want to make sure I've got this on here. The, the links I've... I've got the links on here. I'm going to close out of that article. I'm going to close out of that, you all. We, you can see we're back here on this main page. 555. Five, five. I love the concurrent viewers, you all. 555. Five, five. That is like the... That is wild. Um, it really is. It's extremely a wild... Um, a wild theory. But... Um, if we if we went over there, I just closed that out. You I did. I closed it out. But let me let me just show you this. I can I can grab the media source that I had um, rec the media source that I had um, took from there, and I can show you what's happening on here with the media source. This is um, Earth's magnetic field, and um, let's slow it down so you can see it. Earth's magnetic field is, um, you can see this orange shows up, and boom. It's not even one Tesla, and CERN's magnetic field is 16.5 Tesla. And today, where's this image at you all? Today, um, that one's that one. Let me, let me pull this image in over here, if I can. I'm going to put this second image over the media source. Um, look at this. LHC has a magnetic field of 16.5 Tesla, and this is Earth's. It's so it's so tiny. It really is. And behind this one, you I've got another. Something is coming through the magnetic field. You can see it right here. It's breaking through the interplanetary magnetic field, is what it's doing. Um, I gotta let me see if I can get this on here. There I am, right there. It's breaking through the interplanetary magnetic field. Right there. It's weak. It's very weak. And I never knew, I promise you, I did not know that the Earth's magnetic field was that weak and that CERN's was that strong. But it makes sense uh, since it uses a lot of electricity and it doesn't have iron ore, uh, iron at the center of it. It has mag gigantic magnets. Uh, with titanium and stuff like that in it, you all. Oh, Gina, honey, you did not put all those links in there, you all. Let me come over here and do that. I forgot about that. I'm not going to close this out without those links in it, you all. No way. Let me get this on here, you all. We're going to put all the links that I went to in here. So we can have them for reference. Whew, don't let me forget that. If I ever forget it, you all remind me of it. I'm going to write the word. References. References. There we go. Right there with all these links. Now you see they're in here right underneath the description of this video. It's giving me a hot flash, you all. It is. That's all right. Whoopsie. That's not the right one, Gina. You just push yourself right here. So something's going on and it's going to continue going on. It is. And um, there's talk of the Nibiru system. There's talk of um, the plasma event uh, it seems to tie in with that also um, seems to tie in with uh, Quran and um, the Bible and these movies and all of this kind of stuff you either point to something apocalyptic <laughs> is what they're pointing to um, we live in uncertain times we do and uh, it's all right it really is all right in the big scope of life it's um, it's quite all right uh, We'll weather the storm, and I think we can make it through as long as we don't give up, you all. Knowledge is power. It is. Um, and it, it raises, a, it brings forth awareness. The more knowledge you have, you know, the more you can become aware and the more you can prepare. You can, you all. You can do it. We can do it together. Um, it starts inside of here. you got to get strong in here, you all. You do. Uh, and you want to ground yourself in love. You do. So... Let me um, find my a picture again, you all. Let's um, let's pull this one back over here. That's, let's put this one right here. This is a fairly small one. So, yeah, that's true, you all. 
So that's important to know that CERN is powerful and um, it's more powerful than our Earth's magnetic field. It is. And um, I hope you all enjoyed this. I do. I hope you enjoyed the video tonight and the information. I, I didn't know any of it. I like learning together with you. I really do. Um, so with that being said, hello wherever you are in any part of the world. Hello. From my heart to yours love you have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you um apple brooks oh that's wonderful jim davidson um apple brooks honey susan b honey thank you all for being on here and moderating i'm sure it was a wonderful chat i really am have a wonderful um evening you all good night